I see myself as a storyteller primarily, whatever medium I'm using. And so, yeah, in order to tell people stories, you've got to ask questions. I guess the camera makes me nosy, as I said before. It makes me look at things I would never bother looking at. I would never look at that. Down this little alleyway there and this collection of different houses and stories and lives lived. And the camera makes me look at that, it makes me take it on board and think about all the souls who've inhabited that space. There is this feeling that you're unveiling something, you're lifting the veil when you're photographing or filming. You're, you're lifting the veil on something that to a, for a large part of society is kind of hidden in mystery, uh, veiled in mystery, and uh, we don't quite know what goes on behind those scenes. We have an idea and maybe we make up uh, beautiful stories in our mind about what might be happening, but as a photographer you can really see that and get access to those moments and and that does feel privileged, does feel like a privilege. It's great to be close to other artists, I really enjoy that and having the Dirty Old Gallery next to me and all these other artists studio, Lee Dyer used to be above, I think he still has a space there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to be here and to have access to the sea. I mean, I swim every day, whenever I can, if the sea allows it. And um, so, to, so for me, this is a perfect place to be working and to be photographing. Maybe somewhere that I came to when I was much younger, when I was about 16 or 17. I used to live in Rye and I used to come to Hastings on the train with a friend. And we used to walk up and down that road and maybe I'm looking for myself. And I keep going back there and sometimes I'm just looking for this elusive image. Maybe I never quite find it, but I keep, I keep returning to it and keep looking for it. There are certainly themes, ideas that run through my work. And uh, one of them is uh, stairs. So this is, this, was a, this is a very recent one. So I've kind of, I'm kind of uh, reconnecting with this project, uh, which I started many years ago. And again, there is this, it's obviously, it's partly about the light and it's partly about the, the, the design and the beauty of the staircase itself, but it's also about the atmosphere. And I think that is represented by the light. And, and uh, I, I can recognize that and I, and I know that there is some sense of all the people who've come up and down those stairs, that they're, they're leaving a trace for me. And, I, and I'm responding to that and picking up on that. But this is a really interesting spot for me. The stains from the, uh, on the paintwork from the ventilation bin, the stairs inevitably, of course, because I'm crazy about stairs, the carpet hanging over. And that kind of has got echoes of New York suddenly for me there which are really uh, evocative. And, and what's interesting about even the most utilitarian staircase, there's always some beauty to it. There's a little edge in the ironwork there, which is purely decorative and not functional. The weatherboarding, more stairs at the top. I mean, this is a rich, fertile area for image making for me. The associations we make from our own lives to other people's lives. But for the stairs, there is this sense of movement. There is this sense of entrance and exit. And they're, uh, they're, you're, you're designed to move through them and up them. And they're often used as, as metaphors for other, other emotions and other ideas in, in films and, and, um, and photography. It's the most incredibly beautiful, amazing crescent. And yet what I love about it is it's real. It's not been tarted up, it's not been done up to fuck knows what. It's just, it's a real living place. And therefore those stories and those voices are still really loud. They haven't been painted over or, or tarted up or removed from our kind of culture. They're loud and, and I think it's really, it's really important that these places and these voices can still be heard. I want to live in a world where, where we can recognise ourselves and our history and our past. And all human life is here. The dogs, the buggies, the teenagers, it's all here.
So this, this is what used to be this, this place, which was full of halls and mirrors and God knows what else, and these floors above here. The word the, I think, is, is great. Who knows how that might be used in a series. And a uh, hall of mirrors and all those kind of things. They were classic kind of seaside things. But to us coming from Rye, Hastings was such an a, a, exotic place. Got some nice reflections from people walking yeah. by here. I really feel blessed by the people that my camera has brought me into contact with and the situations that it's brought me into contact with. These are people and places I would never have gone without the camera and I'm so grateful for that because uh, people are very open. People are surprisingly open about, about let, letting you into your life and, and in their lives rather. I'm fully aware that they uh, have put confidence in me and trust in me to represent them in the way that they want to be seen. Uh, and the way that they feel is true to them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I have this sense of responsibility in, in what I'm capturing and what I'm, I'm uh, describing. But at the same time, I have to interpret it in the way that I see is right. And I can't be too affected by how they want to see themselves or how they w might be worried about seeing themselves. The idea of, obviously, objectivity is, uh, is not necessarily something that I adhere to because I think subjectivity is the reality. Uh, I can't enter a situation without and, and separate myself from it and my own views from it. So this, so this image on the wall is from a uh, series that I've been accruing over many, many years. What I find really interesting in the, in the, about them is that um, they feel as if they've just been drawn from a, from a, film, sh from a film itself and um, there's a moment before and a moment after and there's a narrative that even I don't fully understand when I'm photographing it, but I recognize the moment, I recognize the kind of poignancy or the pregnancy of the moment and how um, the narrative extends beyond the frame. And I'm, and I'm really intrigued by that situation that I've got. And I know at the moment I've pressed the shutter, but even afterwards, even years afterwards, I'm still kind of making up stories in my head about who they might be and where they might be going and what they might be doing. But I think photography is as much about what the viewer brings to the picture as it is to what the photographer tries to put in the image. I think it's a two-part process. And, um, and so I think you bring your, I'm hoping that people bring their own stories and their own ideas about my photographs. And this is um, from this series, which I've entitled uh, Still Films, um, which is again exploring the idea of um, this before and the after that I've entered this scene, that in a way I have no understanding of the scene that I'm entering, but I have preconceived ideas about the place and the location and the people, and I'm kind of challenging those by, by entering them with my camera. So this is a street corner in Cuba, which I spent about five hours on, and I just hung about there until they got bored of me and stopped, stopped noticing me. And, um, and I was able to kind of get quite very close to them and to kind of become in slightly invisible. I feel um, to a certain extent to work, to photograph with people, you have to kind of uh, get this invisible coat that you have to kind of put on. And it takes a long time to, to put it together. But after a while, you, you are able to get very, very close to people without them being intimidated by you or being threatened by you or hopefully being affected by you. Movement is something that I, I, am, I am really drawn to as a photographer. Um, and uh, there's something about images through the windscreen, which is a fantastic frame in itself and it's widescreen and it's 16 by nine. And it's just like a moving cinema to me. And uh, there's something really I'm really drawn to and I've built up a collection of images in such, such a diverse set of locations and landscapes and weathers that uh, I think they're really interesting. Yes, here's from these, uh, this is from the windscreen series. Again, this is about understanding the light and the quality of light. This is as the sun is going down on a bus journey towards Oaxaca from the Pacific coast of Mexico. And this, this window gives this, it's a frame within a frame and it's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, 
to, to compose and to frame the world. It feels like a frame and it is a bit, again refers back to, to a cinema screen, but there's this feeling that as soon as you start to move through the world, you, are, you have to focus more clearly and you have to get, try and get more clarity on what you're seeing because it's going to be gone in a second. And this is one of those windscreen images that I was referring to earlier. Another, another one where you've got this fantastic, amazing road that seems to stretch away for forever and ever and ever on this journey that might never end. This particular journey felt like that, I must say. This was like seven days driving from New York to Vancouver. And we just drove and drove and drove. And uh, it was the ultimate kind of road trip in some ways. We came across some extraordinary things, but along the side of the road, but the road itself was the main character, the main part of the narrative. Uh, the idea that you're on this journey that has no dis predetermined destination, that you're just going to move and keep moving, and, uh, and who knows what you'll come into contact with and where you'll end up, and it's like putting yourself in, in a uh, series of situations where you don't know the eventuality, and I think that's always really exciting. As an image maker, uh, light is something of an obsession for me, I think. I've spent my whole creative life trying to understand it and uh, trying to listen to its different voices and moods and, uh, and emotions, and um, I... I will continue that journey, I'm sure, for my for my whole life because um, there's, it's always fascinated me, I think. It's always fascinated me. The sun is setting in a street in Stone Town in Zanzibar and this shadow is perfectly laid out in this shaft of light between the narrow streets just catching the top of the um, of the parasol and the roof and um, it's just just capturing and giving detail to all these extraordinary things that we wouldn't normally observe and then here this is almost a, this is a kind of classic British flat light that uh, has its own qualities and that has its own associations uh, understanding that light has been the most wonderful, wonderful part of my creative journey and to recognising its multiple voices, myriad voices and uh, that rising to the challenge of trying to capture even just a fraction of that beauty that, that, that becomes when the sun comes from behind a cloud and it just catches and, and gives voice and contrast and tone and texture to every single thing around me and it's almost deafening sometimes like I'm almost deafened by it and my brain is trying to desperately get another bloody roll of film in the camera and I'm rolling on badly uh, and I'm just see something about that moment that is just extraordinary and it's a wonderful wonderful gift. Here the light again this is um the, the, the vapour from the um, waterfall is just being lit up incredibly beautifully by these, this pool of sunshine uh, reflecting off the water and bouncing around and it was like this massive reflector and uh, it's kind of got a spiritual quality to it for me. Before you take the photograph, particularly if you have a limited amount of, the, of exposures, before you take the photograph in your mind, you kind of press it, you take the picture, you take the film to the dark room, you process it, you contact it, you make a small print, then you make a big print, you put it in the frame and you put it on the wall above your fridge and you say in that, and you do all this in a fraction of a second to say yes or no before you even take the press the shutter, do you know what I mean? But almost as soon as I put that camera to my eye, all that is stripped away and all I'm seeing is I'm seeing it in this tones of black and white and uh, and it gives me a clarity and a, and, a, and a kind of prism through which I can translate 
everything that I see in front of me. I love the challenge of working on location and and um, and creating images that look like they've been set up, uh, playing with the scale and the perspective. But I'm always looking for stories and narratives, and I'm looking for. And sometimes that sometimes those stories are conveyed just in a simple look or gesture. And I'm looking for connections and relations between people. And I'm making all kinds of um, stories up in my mind as I'm photographing. I'm making connections to people that may not even be there. Sometimes when I've travelled with my camera, I've been like I've been to places that I knew nothing about and were totally out of my depth and was like blown away by the uniqueness of it. But at other times, I'm also very much in this film of my own, film of my own making, which is built on hundreds of years of movies and image making and potentially the work of other artists and photographers. And I guess I'm responding and I'm responding to that. But I'm also aware of my uh, selection and cropping and framing that is that I'm very much making my own film. I'm making my own stories and I'm, and I'm aware of that. And as I say, there, was a, there would have been a time when that would have been seen as being not objective and too much of a viewpoint, but now more and more I realise that that is what I'm really drawn to and it's, and it's a much more honest and interesting way to create imagery. Sometimes I'm drawn entirely to people. I love, I love their kind of problem solving of dealing with groups of people and large, sometimes large groups of people and finding a moment within that kind of composition that makes sense of it all and gives it, gives everyone their space and their dignity and their beauty within the composition and, um, and that's a real challenge that I enjoy. And I've always tried to use my camera in a very positive way and I've always tried to show what I see as the being the best of people in those situations. And I try and give people their dignity. But part of the reason I photograph is because I'm really interested in people and other people's lives and the world around me and my relation to them. So I think that right is, is the same right that we all have to look and to share and to enjoy that experience at that moment.